Hello viewers and welcome to Spotlight here on Hope TV where you look and live and we always do our very best to bring to you persons in our society who are moving us in the direction of light and by the power of God because our society, our community really, really needs light and we are happy on this edition uh, to be joined by a pastor who is also a scholar, not just a scholar, but uh, one who has done quite some work uh, on African culture and the Christian faith. And it's none other than uh, Reverend uh, Jacob Kimathi Samuel, who is also uh, the senior pastor of Sitam Kangundo Road, and we are happy to have you on Spotlight. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you know, you. and uh, it's, it's a wonderful thing to have you. Thank and uh, seeing um, uh, a pastor who is a scholar, mm -hmm. it's uh, because you know it's 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 this there's bound to be a lot of insights there. Yeah. Uh, and uh, uh, as we continue with this conversation, we look forward to um, uh, you know just learning more about also the book you've written. And viewers, uh, uh, Pastor uh, Jacob has written a book called Reimagining Theology for Postcolonial Africa, and his case study the Akorino faith. And we all know the Akorinos have quite their thing. Uh, and we're going to learn more about also what he's found out in his research and what is documented in this book. Can do engage us and text us on triple triple two three two. That's our text message line. Also, uh, follow us on Twitter, engage us on Facebook. We'll be very glad to hear what you have to say. So again, Pastor Kimathi, yes. welcome. Thank you. Thank and you. Uh, uh, it's refreshing to uh, find that uh, you are a Christian, you know, you're a pastor mm -hmm. and you're a scholar at the same time, yeah. uh, PhD, you mm -hmm. know, uh, because oftentimes we feel that as a pastor, mm -hmm. uh, you can minister to PhDs, but you don't need a PhD yourself. So, uh, I mean, what has inspired this journey of you, you know, just going all the way to becoming, um, you know, you know, doctor, PhD? I think we must give the best to God. Mm -hmm. Why should we have PhDs in medicine, engineering, and not pastors? Mm -hmm. After all, we are transforming people, preparing people for heaven. Mm -hmm. And God himself must be the, the greatest intellectual that there can be. Mm -hmm. And so I thought to myself, let me give myself to scholarliness mm -hmm. so that I can give ministry at that level. Mm -hmm. You see, you are able, at that level, you are able to speak to those who are intellectuals mm -hmm. and you are also able to speak to everyone else. Okay, mm -hmm. and which is interesting because sometimes when uh, you are a scholar mm -hmm. and um, you are aware of your scholarship, mm -hmm. at the same time you want to communicate to people who are not scholarly mm -hmm. uh, and sometimes you know how you balance that, mm -hmm. uh, do you find yourself having sometimes uh, a strain or a bias or sometimes you feel you're becoming too basic? Uh, y you, you need to know your audience, mm -hmm. and uh, if you know what you are saying, then you, you don't need to make it complicated, mm -hmm. actually. Mm -hmm. And by knowing your audience, there are times when, like if I'm lecturing or I'm speaking in a scholarly environment, mm -hmm. I'll use that language and that reasoning. Mm -hmm. But I can still do the same with other people, bring it down to the level of the understanding mm -hmm. uh, with no you know, with, with no really uh, any challenge mm -hmm, at all. Mm -hmm. This is actually very, very possible. Okay. And more so if you are a practical person. If you, your life is in the library, library mm -hmm. all the time, mm -hmm. then you may not be able to speak to ordinary people. Okay. But if you live, minister to people, mm -hmm. you are down here with us, then you speak our language, mm -hmm. but you give it uh, a scholarly listening and mm -hmm. understanding. Okay. And that way you lift people. Yeah. Yes. You know, in addition to being able to minister to intellectuals, yes. um, what other opportunities arise yeah. from you being a PhD and a minister? There are many. Mm -hmm. One is uh, I'm a lecturer, actually. Mm -hmm. I, I teach in some of the Christian universities. Mm -hmm. I teach undergraduate, postgraduate. I supervise mm -hmm. uh, 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 master student, PhD students, 
and that's really a platform I, I, I think that uh, is important in raising leadership mm -hmm. for the church and the community. Okay. And uh, as a result of this book, people, you know, invite me to mm -hmm. speak in engaging meetings. Mm -hmm. where, and especially, uh, I, I think about social transformation. Mm -hmm. You know, our societies need to be reimagined mm -hmm. and be socialized differently from yeah. what we see. Okay. And uh, those engagements come mm -hmm. and they are always a good time for me. Okay. Yeah. You know, and uh, I, I have to ask you this question because uh, there is always that general feeling that mm -hmm. there are uh, disciplines mm -hmm. that are somehow heavier or seem superior. Mm -hmm. uh, for instance, um, the heavy sciences, let me call them that, mm -hmm. that if you're a PhD, for instance, in physics, yes. you know, yes. and uh, you're a PhD in theology, that yeah. you're light years apart, uh, <laughs> as if they, they don't rank the same way. Yeah. Um, I mean, how do you engage that? Like, uh, being thought maybe of as your PhD is, but maybe a lightweight, you know, compared uh -huh. to a heavyweight uh -huh. uh, PhD in mathematics or something uh -huh. like that. Yeah, <laughs> that's not true. <laughs> Every PhD is is mm -hmm. just as engaging and as heavy mm -hmm. in its own area of discipline. Mm. Like uh, when you studied theology, like I did to study theology, my major was theology and culture. My minor was development and systematic theology. So really, when you study, uh, for example, development, you are dealing with world economies. That is engaging. When you talk about culture, you are mm -hmm. talking of human cultures. Mm -hmm. And culture is so important. In fact, uh, it's only that uh, maybe in our country, where the issues of culture, understanding mm -hmm. cultures, mm -hmm. the anthropology of human beings, mm -hmm. is not taken serious. Otherwise, um, in other uh, countries, mm -hmm. the, the progressive countries. Uh, studies in human culture mm -hmm. is so important. Yeah. Because if you want to control people, understand their culture, or change their culture, impose your culture, you have them. Mm -hmm. So it's a very, very engaging, deep, uh, important okay. uh, area of study in mm -hmm. its own right of this spring. Yeah. Mm. And um, uh, we are maybe more in the era now of what has been termed as interdisciplinary studies yes uh, that's is, that's a very big area these days where uh, they when you engage as area like theology yeah. you don't just engage it on its own you you have aspects as you say of anthropology sociology sometimes politics yeah. um and um you know one of the things that again that should translate to is the church the ideas of the church you know being felt in other areas as well mm. Um, and from observation, very few mm -hmm. fresh ideas mm -hmm. are going into the society mm -hmm. from the church. Mm -hmm. Why is that so? Well, it's true, apart from politics that is going to the society, mm -hmm. uh, no many good ideas. Mm. I think there are a number of things uh, that brings to that. First, um, and especially in the Pentecostal uh, circles, mm -hmm. as scholarliness is not uh, embraced very fast. I see in the mainland churches there is a lot of uh, scholarliness. Mm -hmm. So I would think one of the reasons could be the level of our interaction with knowledge. Mm -hmm. And the more we find we churn out PhDs in theology and those other areas, mm -hmm. we, we, we will be able to uh, engage the society more and more. Yeah. The other thing is that sometimes uh, theological studies, uh, th sometimes it, it could be taken a bit narrow. Mm -hmm. um, and that is unfortunate. And we need to rethink how we really train our pastors mm. so that uh, we are they are trained not only on theology, but they are trained on uh, psychology, mm -hmm. sociology, economics, mm -hmm. so that they are all rounded mm -hmm. and they are able to interact with the society mm -hmm. at all facets, at, at all levels. Okay. But traditionally, there was a time when the training was a bit narrow, but mm -hmm. now it is changing. Okay. And with that, we'll see the pastors and the ministers and mm -hmm. the origin engaging more and more 
with the issues that affect our society. Yeah, because uh, if, you know, at one point in time, uh, they described theology as the queen of sciences. That's true. And, uh, but uh, when we look at that, sometimes yeah. there's a certain really, as we say, slow. Mm -hmm. It's like theology has carved in itself with its own internal ideas yeah. that don't leak into the society. It's yeah. like theology has become over-involved with itself yes. uh, as compared to becoming a factory of uh, ideas yeah. that affect the larger life. You know, yeah. And uh, there has been uh, also a discussion. Mm -hmm. um, it comes up now and again mm -hmm. about the, uh, the controls that the government wants to put on the church, yeah. the kind of supervision, mm -hmm. uh, because the church seems to not take good care of itself. And one of the things that um, has been mentioned or proposed has been that pastors must have a certain level of education. They mm -hmm. must have a degree, for instance. Mm -hmm. That has made a lot of opposition uh, from uh, especially some of the uh, perspectives that mm -hmm. would say that for God does not need an education. Mm -hmm. uh, when God called me, he mm -hmm. called me, mm -hmm. and he didn't ask me to uh, go to school. He asked me to have ears to hear his voice, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. uh, how, can you speak to that? I think we need the two. Mm -hmm. We need uh, the core is very, very important because if you have a lot of education, but you have no core, you still not minister in the church effectively mm -hmm. because really the uniqueness of the church is that it's a spiritual entity uh, guided by God, mm -hmm. the word of God. And so really the core and the anointing of God is very key. Mm -hmm. But beyond you know, uh, the core, you also need the knowledge. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When you look at uh, Paul, the mm -hmm. apostle, because of his thorough educational backing ground. He comes out as the best of the apostles and the, a lot of our theology is based on Paul. Uh, were it not for Paul, the church would have died uh, at its infancy. Mm -hmm. But you know, he was able to interpret issues, he was able to engage both the Jews and the Greeks mm -hmm. because of his level of, uh, of knowledge and intellectual engagement. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I would say that what the government is saying, yes, uh, is plausible. It, it can be discussed. Mm -hmm. But we have to have the two. We have to emphasize the core of God mm -hmm. and then some level of relevant education. Okay. However, we also know that uh, because of ability, because of age, some pastors may not eventually attain a degree. They could talk of some um, maybe a diploma. They mm -hmm. could also have a, the church should be allowed to have a criteria mm -hmm. to appraise the, the, the ministers mm -hmm. without necessarily the government prescribing mm -hmm. the kind of education. Mm -hmm. the, the church should be able to say the basic level of education that the pastors should have and be encouraged to have. Mm -hmm. Uh, and not to wake up one day and say, you have no degree, you stop pastoring. Mm -hmm. Because even our MPs, there was a time, <laughs> <laughs> the debate yeah. was there, they them all up, you know, degrees. But we know, really, mm -hmm. there are those that have degrees and uh, those who have no degrees, mm -hmm. but they are effective on the ground. Okay. Yes, yes. All, yes. all right. Mm -hmm. um, that's, 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 that's an important uh, uh, conversation to have because uh, most of the times when you think about growing the church, mm -hmm. uh, we often think in terms of growing maybe the structures and, mm -hmm. and the branches, but not necessarily growing the personnel. Uh, and I think that when you talk about the, there's a certain you know, movement whereby people are now embracing more education and mm -hmm. even the government you know, proposal is not entirely strange mm -hmm. uh, to many denominations. I think that uh, it means that we're going further you know, into uh, a church that has more Educated. You see, if you look yeah. at the way mm -hmm. our country is, there was a time that very few people had gone to school. Mm -hmm. There was a time that P3, P2 mm -hmm. teachers mm -hmm. were teaching. But now they are facing that out. Mm -hmm. Soon it will be people with a diploma and above. Yeah. So the society is also evolving uh, and the culture is dynamic. Mm -hmm. So the church also cannot be left behind to be to operating the way they were operating. So the investment is what The investment in education 
and in theological education mm -hmm. in particular is very it's important perfect. for any church yeah. that is going to be relevant to our times. Okay. Mm. Uh, now, talking about our times, yeah. right, mm. uh, Dr. Tari, mm. it's um, interesting that in our times mm. you have uh, taken up an interest in uh, the Christian, the Christianity um, and traditional African culture. Mm. And uh, uh, we are at a time when uh, we have, we seem to have what you can call like a lot of movements like go back, you know, back to culture mm -hmm. kind of movements, you know, like mm -hmm. uh, if you are using another language, the roots movement, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. uh, where there is more calling into mm -hmm. like, what does our culture say. Mm -hmm. and sometimes it at a very radical level. Mm -hmm. Sometimes in very, you know, in 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 some 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 events or some uh, some of the uh, initiation places or mm -hmm. big marks in life, mm -hmm. you find culture is coming in more. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, just want to ask you again, what interested you of all areas of learning? Mm -hmm. Why um, Christianity and African culture? Well, first we are Africans. Mm -hmm. That's a fact for now and for all time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I thought that uh, maybe African culture mm -hmm. has not been understood fully. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, I I have trouble telling people what is culture. Every time I tell people about culture, they mm. quickly imagine me in a skin. Mm -hmm. They, I, I think they, they they narrow culture mm -hmm. to so basic things like the dress code. Mm -hmm. But you know, culture is more than that. Culture is what we do to make sense of life. Mm -hmm. And. Um, you know, our cultures, our African cultures have wealth of values, mm -hmm. great, great values. Mm -hmm. But uh, our encounter with the colonial and the missionaries was such that they, they were too quick to dismiss the cultures mm -hmm. before they understood them fully. Because, you know, one of the challenges in Africa is that we had nothing written. Mm. You know, for them, the West, if they want to know anything, they, it will be it's written. They mm -hmm. go to the library, they understand it. Here mm -hmm. they came to Africa, nothing written. Mm -hmm. The language was a problem. And so before they understood mm -hmm. our cultures, they just dismissed them in entirety. Now, when you, culture is so important to people's life. I normally say culture is what, to people is what water is to fish. Mm -hmm. Fish can't survive outside water, so human beings cannot mm -hmm. live and survive out of culture. Now, what happened is that when the, the, the colonial regime and the missionaries came in, mm -hmm. now they dismissed the culture that they did not understand mm -hmm. in entirety. Mm -hmm. But culture being as important is it, as it is, as a signifier of identity. Mm -hmm. You have no identity until you find your identity in culture. Now, people endured for some time. Mm -hmm. But with the time, they felt, no, no, we, we, we are lost. Mm -hmm. We must go to our culture. And even now, today, when you see this resurgence of culture again, uh, let's go back to our roots, there is that threat again, that mm -hmm. people feel they are losing themselves, they are embracing things that don't make value to them, and now they are saying, now they are looking back over their shoulders mm -hmm. again, what does our culture say yeah. about this? And that will continue for as long as this debate continues, and especially if the church mm -hmm. uh, is not careful how we handle the movement back to the culture, mm -hmm. then the, the divine might wi widen. Yeah, because uh, uh, Dr. Harry, the, the, the question seems to be mm -hmm. uh, what as a Christian, yes. um, as an African Christian mm -hmm. of the African culture yeah. should I keep? Mm -hmm. Some even reverse it and say what as an African of the Christianity should I accept? You know, because uh -huh. there is that there are those dynamics there. But let's work with how do you know uh -huh. what to keep, and how do you know what not to keep? For instance, uh, uh, say there are many people who these days when they go to the wedding ceremonies, yes. uh, there is there is what there is a simple simple version. Yes. Dowry, of course, is a constant. Yes. Uh, but there are some people who ask mm -hmm. actually, 
is what is the place of dowry, yes. right? Yes. And uh, some other people even go a step further to do other ceremonies like, uh, uh, you know, the Ngurarios, for yes. instance, in, the, uh, in central Kenya. Yes. You know, they do all this ceremony that involves blood and some people say we don't want any shedding of blood. Mm -hmm. um, if you see one of the signs that you should reject something mm -hmm. is if blood is, <laughs> is shed. Yes. Because that's the, the, the language is that's another covenant, you know. Yes, yes. And you're inviting demons into, mm -hmm. your, mm -hmm. into your marriage. And mm -hmm. some very interesting and very sharp mm -hmm. uh, interpretations. Uh, but how do you know what to keep and what not to? That's a, an important question. Mm. Because in life, I categorize um, uh, life or issues of life and practices into three. One, there are things that are so abhorrent, abhorrent, mm -hmm. and and uh, the standard is actually the Bible, mm -hmm. the Word of God. Mm -hmm. the, that is the standard. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, when we uh, look at life, then mm -hmm. we divide matters into three using the word of God as the standard. Yes. Now, there is, as I said, what is so abhorrent, abhorrent yes. to human life. Mm -hmm. We may, like human sacrifice, mm -hmm. maybe that's a good example. Mm -hmm. And uh, as Christians and the human beings, we must s reject that and uh, say a categorical no. Mm -hmm. Then there are things in the culture that are so good. I think one of them in our traditional cultures, African cultures, is human relationships. Mm -hmm. That was so important that even when you are marrying you are, or you're doing your wedding, marriage, what is so important mm -hmm. is not the wedding day, it is the relationship that is emanating mm -hmm. from the two families to the two communities. Mm -hmm. You see Africans will be late for a meeting because they had to stop and greet because human relationships are so very important. Mm -hmm. Now that should be affirmed. That's mm -hmm. a value mm -hmm. that should be affirmed. Mm -hmm. Then there are things in the middle. They are not to this extreme or the other extreme. Mm -hmm. And one of them is actually, for example, the, the dowry. Mm -hmm. Those things need to be redeemed. Mm -hmm. They need to be redeemed and used. Mm -hmm. And I give the example of, of, of dowry. Mm -hmm. Uh, if it is taken to the extreme with the prescription of this and that, mm -hmm. it, it goes wrong. But it can be redeemed mm -hmm. because it is the, the thing that brings the two families together mm -hmm. when it is really understood. Yeah. The boy is circumcision. Mm -hmm. That something can also be redeemed instead of taking it to the extreme culture uh, with the sacrifices and the shedding on blood. The church can use it actually mm -hmm. and actually take it over from the tradition and use it as a discipleship tool. Mm -hmm. What would stop the church from bringing these boys, circumcise them, teach them the values that we need in the community, mm -hmm. and teach them the word of God and use it as actually a, a point of discipleship. Mm -hmm. Now talking of the things that are happening now in central Kenya mm -hmm. with the shedding of blood, the understanding of the blood is that uh, kind of you are being rooted, so to say, mm -hmm. to the ancestors. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, the question is that, is that necessary? Is that really necessary? Mm -hmm. For us, as believers, we believe that uh, uh, really the blood that Jesus Christ shed is sufficient for us. Mm -hmm. Our identity is in Christ, mm -hmm. not necessarily uh, in uh, where we come from. And so we need to know that there are things in the culture that need to be redeemed, mm -hmm. but there are things in the culture that we completely need to negate. Okay, especially because of their, of their meaning. Yes. Uh, because you say it's not the blood, mm -hmm. it is the significance of shedding it. Yes. That sometimes would um, contradict yes. the larger... Um, understanding as a Christian. Yes. Interesting because I think that's something that needs to really be disengaged more because mm -hmm. uh, as a church we don't seem to have what you can call like this is the list of abhorrent things. You yes. Know? yes. <laughs> and of course there are so many cultures across this uh, these, uh, this country yes. and they all have their own 
uh, ways. And yeah. I think it's every culture, uh, other church, we may need to now write this abhorrent. Otherwise, the moment we leave it out there, yeah. it becomes subjective. Uh, but it's an interesting interaction when you think about it. Yes. Uh, and uh, when we are at that, mm. we cannot speak about what to keep, yes. you know, mm. uh, as, as the Africans, African Christians, uh, without talking about what of the colonial yes. um, uh, culture we need to yes. uh, also live out or um, not engage or not, not, not incorporate it as part of our Christian practices. Yes. What are some of those Western things that we must, again, uh, observe and say, mm, this is very Western, yeah. it's uh, very spoken about, it's very emphasized in the Christian faith, but you don't need to have it. You know, the gospel happens in a context. Again, mm. the gospel does not happen, uh, you know, in a cultural vacuum. Mm. Now, the Western people received the gospel and it was mediated through their culture. Now, when they came to Africa, they brought the gospel that was encased, mm. dressed in their culture. Mm. And they did not tell us this is the end of the culture, this is the beginning of the mm. <laughs> gospel. Of, of, of the gospel. So yes. they presented both mm. as though it is Christianity. Mm. Now, uh, then we, the, the, the Africans, received that mm -hmm. and they started doubting some of these things. Are they still required in the gospel or mm -hmm. not? Mm -hmm. Let's give a few examples. Yes. Let's talk about the wedding. Mm -hmm. Is a cake biblical? Or oh, it's not? Or do you <laughs> I have not read <laughs> anywhere in the Bible thou shalt have a cake. <laughs> Anyway, uh, because there is no, I mean, a wedding without a cake is unimaginable, like... Well, <laughs> uh, that, that's why we need to reimagine okay. these things. Mm -hmm, it mm -hmm. can happen without. Mm -hmm. Is a ring necessary? It is not. Well, it mm -hmm. just shows that you are married. Mm -hmm. But what if there is something else more acceptable mm -hmm. that can show that you are married? Okay. The Asians have some red dot here. Yeah. And that's what shows that one is married. Mm -hmm. Now is uh, you know again they have talked of the wedding ring, the wedding mm -hmm. uh, cake, the mm -hmm. wedding gown, and expensive suit. Mm -hmm. Are these necessary? And look at how they are impacting mm -hmm. negatively on our faith. Yeah, because that that may be that idea of the wedding. Yes. Uh, when you and from now what you're describing the Western components of it. Yes. have really made it really expensive. Yes. Uh, such that the the love uh, mm -hmm. of the family mm -hmm. that's supposed to begin here mm -hmm. is sometimes suffocated yes. by the way this, what you have described now as uh, Western ideas. Yes. You know, the, the, the price of the ring, uh -huh. you know, the, 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 the kind of wedding, wedding gown that you're wearing, mm -hmm and also the size of cake. And those have really ballooned in terms of cost. Yes. And uh, making even the very authentic love almost impossible. <laughs> yeah. Or people concentrate mm -hmm. so much on these things. Mm -hmm. And then the following day after the wedding, you realize these were not important. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You realize you are in debt or you are in a loan. Mm -hmm. And immediately friction and stress mm -hmm. comes to mm -hmm. the marriage. Mm -hmm. And so we need to, uh, and then the worst bit for me here is now where young believers earning little money because when we start working, we are not earning money. Mm. And the they, they need, the hinge of marriage has come. They mm. have found each other. They need to marry, but they can't afford mm -hmm. this huge wedding. Mm -hmm. It's worse. Now, if culture also describes, a, 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 you know, a prescribes a huge dowry, mm. what do the young people do? And they are really saved. They are open. Mm. They begin living with each other and they say, when we get money, we'll do it later. But mm -hmm. you and I know that uh, doing it later is never the same. Mm. And then temporarily, that believer loses their faith mm. and their confidence in Christ. It's amazing how, how a Western component can go all the way oh, yeah. to affecting the faith. You uh, know, of the African Christian, yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. And that is really, really bad okay. for our faith. Mm -hmm. And we need to, and we also like to celebrate those glamorous mm -hmm. big weddings mm -hmm. with all these paraphernalias from the West. Yes. We need, as uh, uh, church leaders, we need to begin to celebrate 
simple weddings, mm -hmm. not necessarily on a Saturday, on a Sunday, boardroom weddings, where people are themselves and they can do what they can afford because all these things are not necessarily necessary. Mm -hmm. They are not biblical. You know, when you're talking about that, mm -hmm. uh, I think, um, and we'll ask you a little later about Asita uh, Mkangundo, mm -hmm. because we want to find ministers. Yes. Uh, especially those who are enlightened like you, yeah. begin to not just wait for the, 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 the couple yeah. to do a lean wedding, mm -hmm. but to actually have a position that we as a church, mm -hmm. we do simple things and this is what we do. Actually so for free. Mm -hmm. yes. This is what we do. Mm -hmm. The rest of it, mm -hmm. uh, the reception part, so to speak, or yeah. that's really, you know, the, that expensive part is up to your determination. But for us, yeah. as a church, this is what we do. Yes. It becomes so low cost yeah. that uh, uh, the church does not in any way seem to accept, you know, or seem to uh, encourage yes. that that component that is not necessary, but sometimes is suffocating for the couple. Actually, mm -hmm. the wedding can be as simple mm -hmm. as free. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, only the, the marriage certificate yeah. from the government that mm -hmm. you need. Mm -hmm. Behold that, actually it is what you make it, mm -hmm. but it is not necessary, actually. And as you put it, uh, in our premarital counseling classes, mm -hmm. that's where we need the conversation. Mm -hmm. And we tell the young couples, you do not need to take a loan mm -hmm. or, uh, or conduct an arambe or postpone the wedding mm -hmm. just because you want to have this memorable big mm -hmm. occasion mm -hmm. with all these things. And uh, I agree that mm -hmm. uh, a lot of it, the pastors need to demystify yeah. what and is the wedding. Yeah, and, put on, and put even go ahead, not just to propose, but yeah. actually put a structure yes. that dis absolutely discourages yes. those, uh, those uh, and would have helped the society yes. in a big way. Now, yes. um, thank you for those reflections. And one of the interesting things is that uh, in your studies mm -hmm. on uh, about Christianity and African culture, you have really engaged on the a Corino church. Yes. And you have used some very um, very romantic descriptions <laughs> of, the Roma of the Acorino faith. Yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, you have said that uh, this is the academic endeavor or in which Dr. Kemathi engages. Kemathi makes a case that the Kenyan Acorino church, yeah. a vernacular theology, is one example of how Africans continue to deflate the colonial onslaught upon their humanity by reimagining a theology built not on imported notions of Darwinian human progression, <laughs> Ooh, big words, <laughs> Kizungu Mingi, you know, <laughs> but on the wealth of African cultural values. Yes. Wow, that's a very high praise for the Akurino faith. Yes. I, I just want you to enlighten us uh, what are some of the unique things in your research, mm -hmm. some of the unique things that you can say are really um, interesting. Uh, when it comes to the Akurino faith. Yes, and I, I need to start by mentioning why really I chose the Akurino. Mm -hmm. I, they are admirable, I admire them. Mm -hmm. uh, well, uh, and Akurino, there are many, many groups mm -hmm. among the Akurino. Uh, you might have met one uh, that is different from the other one, yeah. and you can say in bracket all of them. Mm -hmm. But so, sometimes it's um, <laughs> it's uh, it's hard to, <laughs> to tell differentiate the yes. to just know that they are different. Yes, we just know them that that's a mokorino, and of course there is uh, they are running uh, uh, light notes that there were four people and one mokorino. <laughs> you know, so <laughs> anyway, yeah, uh -huh. it's unfortunate, mm -hmm. but uh, they are corino, the main stream of the Akolino mm -hmm. is so authentic, so holy. Mm -hmm. If you trace their, their origin, uh, 1926, somebody called uh, Joseph Nanga, his name was Nanga, and he's drunk, he hears a voice, he, he goes into a stupor, mm -hmm. and he hears a voice calling him Joseph. Mm -hmm. the, first of all, that was a surprise, mm -hmm. because he was Nanga. And then when we, he woke up, he looked around, to see the steps of whoever would have called, and there wasn't. Mm -hmm. And uh, he believed that God had called him. Sounds, sounds more like uh, the call of Augustine, you know? Yes, okay. yes. <laughs> Very similar. Uh -huh. Very similar. And, yes. uh, mm -hmm. and then the voice told him to repent. Mm -hmm. Then the next time the voice told him uh, to, to, to tell others to repent. Mm -hmm. 
Subsequently, the boys told him, if Kenya can repent the, the colonial government regime, Ungu, and on and on. And this man, like Paul of old, mm -hmm. he, he went to a seclusion for three years. And he began to read the Bible mm. extensively for mm. three years. He wasn't learned, he wasn't saved, he wasn't even in a missionary church. Concurrently, uh, uh, Nganga came from the area around the Atondo area. Mm -hmm. But concurrently, somebody else called Musa Tuo in Gatanga area mm -hmm. had similar voice. And what is interesting with these people is that when they were filled with the Holy Spirit by themselves, mm -hmm. They trained themselves how to read the Bible, and soon they began to gather disciples around themselves mm -hmm. by evangelizing. Uh, soon they, they would meet each other and they began to form movements. Mm -hmm. They began to resist uh, colonialism silently, not engaging in the fight, but through the word of God. And uh, for me, that was very interesting, mm -hmm. particularly now. I had to ask, where did they get their theology? Mm -hmm. Because our main theology from most of the churches is actually from the, uh, the missionaries. Mm -hmm. Because many of the churches are an offshoot of either missionaries or a church that has been started somewhere and then it comes mm -hmm. to our country. So uh, the fact that uh, they didn't have much uh, contact with the missionary Christianity. I was so interested to know then when did they get mm -hmm. their theology. Mm -hmm. And from my research, I found part of uh, the, uh, the most of their theology was from the Kikuyu culture. They went back to their culture, like Joseph Nanga. When he had this voice, mm -hmm. it was easy for him to say that's the voice of God because the Kikuyu culture knew of a God who speaks mm -hmm. and who directs the affairs of human life. Mm. Now you asked some of the interesting things mm. that are found about the Akurino. The Akurino yes. By the Akurino being able to marry aspects of Kikuyu culture and the Bible, they have an interesting theology mm -hmm. and very good. Let me give a few examples. Mm -hmm. Purity and holiness, mm. sexual purity. You know, in the Kikuyu culture, sex before marriage was never really encouraged. Mm. It, it would was abhorred, it, it it using was, your words. It yes. was really an abhorrent mm -hmm. behavior. There would you find a child outside Wendrock. Mm. Now, they took that cultural purity because it was affirmed in the Bible. Mm -hmm. And for them, sexual purity before marriage is so important. A holy wedding is so esteemed and celebrated and if a wedding is actually not holy, the elders will run away from it. They may not join. Mm -hmm. And if you are Mukurino and you persist in sexual sin, mm -hmm. you know, it's interesting. They will not just rebuke you. Mm -hmm. One day, they will get you and literally thrash you. They will beat you <laughs> physically. They will literally beat you. I hope that is also affirmed in scripture. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's not. It, it's the seriousness. The Lord disciplines the ones he loves. Anyway. <laughs> it's the seriousness yeah. with which mm -hmm. they look at mm -hmm. purity yeah. or sexual purity. Now, one of the challenges, of course, you know, with our modern society and our country in particular, is the level of immorality. Mm. It's just so huge, so huge. Mm -hmm. But he has a group of people, a, group, a church, that is still upholding virginity and affirming it, there's a lot that we can learn mm -hmm. from them. Mm -hmm. So the big emphasis on purity and holiness. Purity Some of the things that stands out? I also found they are, Corino, um, unlike the many of the other churches, where we can see what we describe, we can describe as feminization. Mm -hmm. And let me explain that. Mm -hmm by feminize, feminization of the church, I mean, and that is not necessarily negative, mm -hmm. is that the women are actually uh, almost taking charge or control. Mm -hmm. You find in Sunday school, they are there in the pulpit, in the choir, almost everywhere. Now, uh, that in itself is nothing wrong with that. Mm -hmm. The 
wrong bit of it is that the men, on the other hand, are just folding their hands and they are not part of it. Mm -hmm. Now, we, you and I will know that from our culture, the men took lead mm -hmm. in matters of religion. Yeah. Now, what has happened now? That they are no longer taking charge, they are taking a back seat. Mm -hmm. Now, that is dangerous because if men are not taking charge in the church, maybe they are not taking charge in the family mm -hmm. and in the society. Mm -hmm. For the Akorino, it is different. Again, by looking at the eldership mm -hmm. in the Kikuyu tradition culture, where the Kikuyu elders are, go through this gradation from a boy to a junior, to circumcision, to a junior warrior, senior warrior, to a priest. Mm -hmm. So that the, 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 the most respected people were the priests. That in itself tells you that the whole culture was religious because it reserved those religious positions to the very holy, the respected, and the highest mm. level of elders. Now, the Akorino Church is also, leadership is actually, goes through this kind of gradation. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, so that now, the men are actually the, the leaders of the church mm -hmm. without uh, usurping or, you know, negating the position of the women. The women have their place, mm -hmm. they are respected, many of the women are prophetesses, mm -hmm. and they participate, mm -hmm. but then that every feminization mm -hmm. is not there. Mm -hmm. So the whole family is involved, okay. but the men participate so well, mm -hmm. unlike in the rest of the churches. Which, which is interesting, uh, mm -hmm. because uh, you've observed rightly that in other, in most of the churches today, mm -hmm. um, uh, men are not visible. They are, not. they are taking a back seat, and some of this when we when we see the Corino, we don't sometimes um, see the, 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 the some of this wealth that they have. Mm -hmm. uh, we see it. We see them maybe in another way, but thanks to scholars like you who can be able to bring to us uh, mm -hmm. some of the things that um, uh, the Acorinos um, and such a faith that it's, it's such a good read, a uh, good study, a good uh, representation of, of uh, a mesh between the African uh, culture, uh, the good of it, and yeah. also the, the Christian faith on the other. And there's a lot I'm sure we can talk about that. Uh, it's a whole discussion by itself. Uh, but I just also want to engage you on the the reality of modernization mm -hmm. because the Corino uh, you know are traditional in that way but now we have seen a certain especially with the Corinos the younger ones mm -hmm. in the city you've seen a certain shift you know whereby they are not maybe as protected as they used to be uh, they are pretty integrating now not just with African culture but with urban culture. Yes, yes. Uh, can you talk to that dynamic as well? J just before we mm -hmm. come to that, let me go back again to the whole issue of one other aspect mm -hmm. that I found very admirable about the Akorino. Mm -hmm. the, mm -hmm. the ability to interpret everything in life mm -hmm. through the word of God. Okay. Mm -hmm. In other words, the Akorino have taken care of their members from home mm -hmm. to tomb. When you are born, the Akorino know what to do with the baby, with the mother. Mm -hmm. They even uh, pray and wait on the Holy Spirit to give them the name for the infant. When you, when you grow up as a boy, they take over the circumcision. They don't leave it to the culture. And they use circumcision as a discipleship process. In fact, through the circumcision, you, it's when now you, you, are, you are seen to have grown old enough uh, in faith and in age, and you are given the tavern. When the boys go through the circumcision rate, the church appoints mm -hmm. a youth, a mature youth, to take care of the initiate mm -hmm. and teach this boy the word of God mm -hmm. and not the culture to teach things that are wrong. Mm -hmm. When you get married, the Akorino will demand, you know, and, and you know, even the way they socialize at the time of the marriage. The Akorino will give you a letter. You say you have found a girlfriend, they give you a letter to take to the girl to sign and to allow you to be seen mm -hmm. with that girl because they do not want a situation where 
you pet you so close and then they sin mm -hmm. and uh, you know they are they are also taking care of that aspect of marriage they take charge mm -hmm. they completely carry out the process mm -hmm. you die they are calling you know, or even appoint palm bearers mm -hmm. to take care of the dead and they, they leave the family of the pain and the, uh, the, the mourning and the loss. Mm -hmm. And so the Akurino have interpreted everything in life through the word of God mm -hmm. in their own understanding. Mm -hmm. Now the challenge with the other churches is that at one point or the other they will leave you to the culture. Mm -hmm. When it's come to maybe naming, shaving, they say culture will take care of that. Mm -hmm. Sometimes uh, when you die, they do their part in the church, they let the elders take over. Mm. Even some like dowry. There's some other aspect. Even in the wedding ceremony, yeah. the dowry belongs to culture. And yes. then there is mm -hmm. something, the rings mm -hmm. belong to mm -hmm. the church, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, that to me is a misnomer. The church, the word of God must interpret every part of culture without leaving any out mm -hmm. and enter every space of life mm -hmm. and interpret it for the believers. Okay. And I found that perfect among the mm -hmm. Akurinos. Mm -hmm. Now coming to your question mm -hmm. about um, the modern Akurino church. Um, the, the first, the, the year of late, uh, in 2012, the Akurino came up even with a secretariat for all the Akurino churches. Mm -hmm. And uh, there are churches that are in the cities Mm -hmm. which uh, could be maybe the third generation of the, 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 the original church. Mm -hmm. As more people find jobs and education in the cities, they are not always able to patronize the churches at all. Mm -hmm. And so they form churches. But the interesting thing is that these churches in the cities, they, they still respect and they receive guidance from the archbishops in the up country, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. which to me is very important because those elders still regulate their faith. Mm -hmm. But granted, they have come together, they have mm -hmm. formed a secretariat in 2012. Mm -hmm. They are bringing together all their Corino yeah. and uh, hopefully they are able, where there are some excesses, mm -hmm. they are able to prune that and they uh, and they, they have also embraced um, scholarliness, mm -hmm. some of them. Uh, I have read some work by Professor Solomon Oigua, who is a professor in USA, mm -hmm. uh, in Greek and Hebrew, mm -hmm. a credible professor. I have met many, some doctors among mm -hmm. the Akolino. Uh, when I launched my book, I invited them. They all came at Serena recently. And, uh, such that some of the contemporary Akurino churches mm -hmm. now, they even are people without the taban mm -hmm. because people are being attracted to them, mm -hmm. to their faith, the seriousness of faith, mm -hmm. and to the solutions that they are offering to life. Mm -hmm. Especially that. Yes. Yeah, and I think there, it is interesting also to note that um, the movement has, in a way, defied a lot mm -hmm. of uh, modernization, so to speak, yeah. uh, and uh, has grown to a level whereby it has gained even such great political value. Yes. Uh, because we can see that they are no longer a movement to be ignored. Yes. Uh, which is, of course, a composition that I'm sure as the church continues to use, the words used to defy, you mm -hmm. know, a lot of, um, uh, you know, like what we can call the Western uh, mm -hmm you know, infiltration, mm -hmm. let's, we'll keep observing and mm -hmm. see how it's able to uh, to grow as a church today and in and in the future. Of course, the big message is that uh, the, 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 there's a big aspect of African culture mm -hmm. that should not be lost uh, it, it, in our that's true. Christian faith. Th that's true. At the moment mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. lose your culture, mm -hmm. the sad thing, you are going to play catch up mm -hmm. to the West. Okay. Catch up, catch up. Mm -hmm. And this is a catch up that you have not defined. You don't know where it is going mm -hmm. or where it is. You are just. You're on a leash, you know? You know? Yes, yes. No, no, it's time to say, no, no, no. Mm -hmm. Wait a minute. Mm -hmm. What are we running after? Mm -hmm. And what are we running away from? Mm -hmm. Could we be running for what we have uh, by ignoring it, thinking it is there? Mm -hmm. 
and uh, there is need to stop and reflect and say, come on, mm -hmm. there is something in Africa that can be the bedrock for our progression. Okay, as a church. As a church and even as a community. As a community. Yes. All right. Mm -hmm. um, can you just tell our viewers where we can get this wonderful book? Because I'm sure there are viewers who are wondering now, mm -hmm. where do we get this book? <laughs> uh, they are pastors, they are Christians. Yeah. Uh, maybe you can tell us how where we can get this wonderful well, book. Well, I thank mm -hmm. you for that. Mm -hmm. I must admit this book was uh, published by Bondares Publishers in US mm -hmm. uh, not long time ago. And uh, I'm depending on uh, the, the, the books I bring. I bring them in small bunches mm -hmm. from America. So I'm the sole distributor. Okay. But now uh, with the social media, with, uh, uh, with the cell phone, I'm mm -hmm. reachable. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe I can give my number. Mm -hmm. My number is 0722-350-152. That is 0722 350 one five two. Mm -hmm. Once you call me, I can arrange how the book can reach you easily. Yes. Yes. And of course, you are uh, at uh, Sitam. And uh, I'm Kango Sitam Kango. at can Sitam Can you tell Kango us how Kango the church is doing there? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, very interesting. Mm -hmm. The Lord is good. We are just about to start our first inaugural service mm -hmm. on fourth of August. Mm -hmm. We uh, found a location at Rui Shopping Center mm -hmm. in a school called Vikimiri Schools. Just um, adjacent the Quick Mart supermarket, mm -hmm. and this fine high school with a huge hall has given us a temporal accommodation from mm -hmm. where we are going to locate our church. Mm -hmm. And later on, we will go to a more permanent location. Mm -hmm. But on fourth at two thirty mm -hmm. in the afternoon, we are all assembling there mm -hmm. to uh, to to an inaugural service for Sitam Kangudo Road. Okay. And what, do, what should we expect? I mean, uh, for those people who are maybe looking for a church and uh, in that general area, can you maybe give them some more uh, directions as to uh, what they expect if they come and be part of this fellowship? Yes, one of the mm -hmm. things that we are emphasizing, already there are churches there, mm -hmm. many churches. Mm -hmm. And our interest is actually not to call people from their churches to our church. It will not make a difference mm -hmm. to move people from one church to the other. Our interest is to call the unchurched, mm -hmm. the people who don't go to church or have lost interest in church because mm -hmm. of their experiences there. We are calling them to an holistic ministry that mm -hmm. will be able to take care of their lives, their children, their youth. We, we are crafting a church around, you know, value mm -hmm. for human beings because we know Christ died for all. And so our emphasis is we value you. So if you feel you've lost your value mm -hmm. and meaning in life, Sitam Kangundo Road is the place to come. Mm -hmm. we, we will keep it Christ, we will lift the name of Jesus mm -hmm. and we will take care of all categories of uh, people mm -hmm. from child to the grown-ups. Mm -hmm. And uh, I believe many of you will want to try us on mm -hmm. 4th. Mm -hmm. uh, and even in coming in the and subsequent Sundays. Subsequent Sundays, yeah. our focus is not many things, mm -hmm. it's not money. It is, our focus is the transformation of people's mm -hmm. lives. Focus on transformation of people's lives. Yeah. And of course, uh, you are the pastor. And yes. we expect quite some <laughs> innovative things going on, <laughs> given our conversation here. Yes, yes. And then also, this is uh, the time when we are remembering Sitam at 60. Oh, yes. uh, maybe one big highlight that you can talk about Sitam at 60, uh, one big celebration that you can uh, mm -hmm. be able to say that Sitam has been able to do this, yes. uh, that really stands out for you. Well, uh, as I think of Sitama 60, I think of God's faithfulness. Mm -hmm. I tell you, God has been faithful to Sitam these years. Mm -hmm. that the Lord has given us opportunity to minister. And particularly this year, we are launching six churches. Mm -hmm. In fact, we are even talking of our seventh Mombasa. Mm -hmm. And for me, when these six churches or seven stand on their feet, it will be such a credible witness mm -hmm. to the Lordship of our Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And the Kangudo Road is one of the churches. 
and uh, we have other churches. We have uh, Campbell Road, we have Naibasha, we have Kisi, mm. and um, and uh, you know, and Kikuyu mm -hmm. that uh, started a, a, a few couple of weeks ago, mm -hmm. and uh, we as Sitam, we we are so privileged. Uh, towards the end of August, the uh, uh, we will be having our celebrations, especially on 24th, mm -hmm. uh, Sitam Karen, where we'll bring the entire Sitam family for a time of reflection and thanksgiving to God mm -hmm. for his faithfulness over the years. Mm -hmm. uh, even as we, that day, we'll also be able to launch these six or seven churches. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, we will ordain ministers mm -hmm. because now we have so many ministers that are ready to be ordained mm -hmm. and to take more and greater responsibilities. Mm -hmm. And uh, we in Sitam, we are open. Mm -hmm. The moment you come to Sitam, we treat you as though you've been there for 20 years. Mm -hmm. And uh, come and sample in of our churches, mm -hmm. come for our celebrations on 24th. And throughout that week up to 24th, uh, we will have uh, what we call spring board convention, where every day we have great preachers, world class mm -hmm. preachers mm -hmm. that will be ministering to us right here at Barry Road and culminate with our celebrations on 24th August, Sitam, Karen. All right. Yes. Something definitely to uh, look forward to the Springboard Convention and exactly. also the celebrations uh, right thereafter. Mm -hmm. uh, and also uh, looking forward to a great church yes. at uh, Sitam Kangondo Road. Exactly. And it's been a great conversation. Thank you. And um, uh, we expect to uh, see more, hear more of uh, Dr. Kemathi, mm -hmm. uh, especially engaging aspects uh, of culture and the church mm -hmm. and also releasing, you know, wonderful perspectives in society. Mm -hmm. The glory of God. Amen. Thank you so Thank much. You. Thank God you. God bless Thank you. you Eddie. And viewers, we have been talking to uh, Dr. Jacob Kemathi, who is a senior pastor uh, at uh, Sitam Kangundo Road, and wonderful reflections and reminders that even as we exercise our Christian faith, that we have to remember that there is the Christian faith, but we also are rooted in the African culture. We are Africans, and the dynamics, you know, that relate there, the Christian values, the African values, and what to take and what not to take, and interesting conversation, and a uh, very interesting phrase that he has used, that if you forget your culture, even as a Christian, you will f have to play catch up. Exactly. Wow. <laughs> Yeah. This has been Spotlight. Yeah. Thank you for watching.